What's up, everybody? Before we start the show, I'd like you to know about some of my upcoming performances. Tonight, I'm in Atlantic City at the Celebrity Theater. Uh, get those tickets at GiannisPapasComedy.com if you're just a last-minute type of person. Then uh, the Emmaus Theater in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. That's Saturday, March 4th. Arlington Draft House, March 9th through the 11th in Washington, D.C. Stanford, Connecticut, March 7th through the 8th. Beautiful new comedy club, New York Comedy Club. And Tampa Side Splitters, April 21st through the 22nd. Then Plano, Texas, August 24th through 26th. Providence, Rhode Island, November 10th through the 11th, all rescheduled. And Phoenix, November 16th through the 18th. Patreon.com slash Yanish Pappas Hour for more riveting content. And now, let's get to the show. What's up, everybody? Here's Giannis Pappas with your nightly, weekly, and monthly, and last year's news. John Morant has uh, made another bad decision. Um, I think basketball players probably have the highest percentage of millionaires making bad decisions. It should be a reality show called Millionaires Making Bad Decisions. We'll get into it. Lori Lightfoot has been defrocked. She's been defrocked. Here's the thing that I respect most about Larry Lightfoot. She spent however many years, I think it felt like 50. It could have been she's only in office for two, but it felt like 50 to 100. She really pitched a long day. She did a full game. She pitched a complete game out there in Chicago as far as making the news and making people annoyed. But Lori Lightfoot and her receding hairline has gone away. Her policies of if somebody mugs you in Chicago, you have to apologize to them for being outside and apologizing for how society has failed them is gone. The new mayor is, I didn't bother to learn the name because (laughs) until you can prove that you're going to be a star like Lori Lightfoot, I'm not bothering to learn the name and learn the name at all. Big message about colon cancer here on our web md podcast that i want to talk about i don't know if that got any jokes uh but i will um more i would like to do a public service announcement. i want to do some good a public service announcement i want to do some good um corporate kingdom has come to an end that is i guess the vatican level status of the disney company in orlando florida um desantis has put an end to that desantis has really put an end his, his campaign slogan as governor is, is of Florida should be like, we're putting an end. We're putting an end. It's just a list of things we're putting an end to. Putting an end to black history. Putting an end to trans bathrooms. We're putting an end to um, Disneyland having their own authority over a certain area. We're putting an end to maybe Trump's run in 2024. Stay tuned. I got the scoop. I got the answer. Who's going to win the GOP primary? Trump, Shaq or Kobe, baby. Um, what else is going on? TikTok. Ooh, hanging on by a thin thread. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. I spoke to Sergio Chicon today. He said he hates when people say they're hanging in there. He hates that because he goes, am I supposed to follow up and go like, are you okay? But then when you do that, most people go like, yeah, dude, of course I'm okay. Hanging in there is an expression, but it's like hanging in there sounds like you're just hanging. Doesn't sound like you're doing good. Um... So don't say hanging in there. Say, I'm doing good. Lie. Because nobody is. Oh, and this is what he decides to call right in the middle of the episode. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I could say right there. Hey, for now, it's a Um, (laughs) no-go. China says TikTok bans uh, reflect U.S. insecurity. So China says that we're insecure. The thing that's making girls insecure... You can't argue with them. China's basically saying, hey, man, well, you guys can't handle the heat from the wok. <laughs> wok is Chinese cooking, right, Jess? That's correct. Yeah. So you, if you weren't making your shitty instant coffee, you would have been available for a laugh on that one. But Jesse's just the most okay guy in the universe. Give him an instant coffee. Give him some fucking slippers. He's fine. <laughs> You're just fine all the time. Black History Month is over. We will have a moment of silence. RIP Black History Month. Jared can no longer walk in front of me online in the plane. Because Black History (laughs) Month's over, dog. 
Don't talk to me. Don't acknowledge me. Don't make eye contact with me in the green room. I was letting Jared make eye contact with me in the green room on our shows because of Black History Month. Now it's over. Your month's over. Guess who doesn't love that? Guess who's weighing in on that? Someone who doesn't like to weigh in on anything else. Draymond Green. Just a guy with no opinions has finally decided to have one. We'll get into that. And a fun one. The Mexican president uh, has tweeted a photo of what he calls an elf. So the leader of a country has seen an elf, and he tweeted it. And he did it earnestly, because why the hell wouldn't he? But we're going to have a good time today here on Mr. Yanni's Neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be my friend for the news and be a friend of a... The cult of Wastadillas. Shout out to Leah. Everybody wants a cult. Maybe. We got a cult of pedophiles. We got a cult of pedophiles. People are nervous that podcasts are losing their popularity. Guess who's not nervous? A podcast that hasn't become popular yet. So that's the benefit exactly. to not being huge. We're a boutique right now, and people are going, oh, podcasting's oversaturated. There's no money in podcasting. And we're going, hey, babe, that's another Tuesday or Wednesday, or Thursday, and we're totally fine with it. The best part about not going up is you don't got to come down. You're right there in the middle. Even Steven, easy peasy, mm-hmm. Franks and beans, greens and peas. Greens and peas. It's comfortable. It's cozy. Like a good Chicago, like a good Chicago 40-degree day that we experience me and jared took a date up to the top of what is used to be the sears tower yes now i think it's just called pink (laughs) tower i think they just use the address and we know what that means that means that a sweet old chinese company decided to offer all cash for the tallest building in the western hemisphere i love how it's now the tallest building in the western hemisphere like that means something yeah, because now it just, it means like, um, it's like being the greatest scorer in the G League. Yeah. You know, it's just like going like, this guy was the MVP of the G League. It's like being the tallest midget. Right, because now you go over to the Eastern Hemisphere, and boy, do they got some big building cocks out there. I mean, they are fully erect, mm-hmm. full mast, and they have the bigger buildings. But me and Jared went up to the top. We looked around. I'm not sure if it was worth 80 bucks a pop. What? It wasn't. I think it was 40 bucks a ticket. Holy shit. But me and Jared were proactive, okay? We didn't get our reservation until 3.30. But, you know, I said I'm going right up to this guy because this guy does not care about his job. If you want to beat the system and you want to cut a line or you want to do anything, listen to old Yanni right here. You want to look into the face of the person who's behind the register, behind the clicker, behind the counter, and you want to see what, level of apathy there is in that face. Some people just don't want no trouble. Some people are conflict averse. But most of all, you'll find, especially post-COVID and in America, most people don't care about their jobs. So the guy who was taking tickets for getting us up to the top of Pinking House Tower in Chicago... We just went up there and said, hey, man, we, we, we requested 2.30, but it pushed, pushed out 3.30 because all the 2.30s were sold out. And I was like, you know, we gotta, I got to get my black son back to the Boys and Girls Club by a certain hour, okay, because he has a foosball tournament that he's ranked in. And, and I said, my name's Mr. Drummond or whatever his name was. And he goes, you know what, I, sir, you guys can go in right now. So we skipped the line. Like a couple of pushy Jews on a Broadway break. (laughs) We figured out a way to cut the line. And we did good. And we went up there. And I don't recommend it. It's uh, a longer wait to get on the elevator and off the elevator than it is to, like, look 
at. And to be honest with you, past a little bit of the Chicago skyline, not much to see in in Ohio. Just a lot of fog. Yeah. Since LeBron left, there's nothing to see. Yeah, it was, it was, if LeBron's not in Cleveland, there's nothing to see yeah. beyond Chicago. But Chicago's a beautiful, clean town, and winter is the best time to visit it because it's too cold to shoot. So that's always good. Yeah, it's a great city. Yeah, I, I say don't go in the summer. You don't want to go out. When I go, it's, I go, it's beautiful outside. It's 10 degrees. Walk around. Enjoy mm-hmm. the city safely. Mm-hmm. Safe and it's clean. It's like New York with test corrections. Let's be honest. You can't shoot in mittens. <laughs> It's a good, that's a good uh, Eagle Wit joke. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the deal. Me and Jared, we wanted to go see tourist, uh, Chicago's biggest tourist attraction. We wanted to see it. So we went to the Subway sandwich spot that Jesse Smollett bought his sandwich from to just see Chicago's most important spot. Yes. And I like to wonder about when the guy who made that sandwich... If he knew that Jesse Smollett was not going to eat that sandwich. Because there, <laughs> there's a way you order the sandwich when you're going to eat it. You pay attention to the details and the condiments and you're very pointy. But you know Jesse Smollett, knowing that the sandwich was just going to be a prop and a fake hate crime, was probably going like, just put whatever, just give me a sandwich. He was just going like, yeah, 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 yeah. Roll it in, I don't care, give me a used one. Take one out of the garbage. It doesn't matter. This is going to be on the floor in 15 minutes when I get hit by my buddies who I paid who are fake MAGA guys. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. This is a prop. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The guy was like, do you want ketchup or mustard? He was probably going, I don't know, dude. What would you put on it? Just <laughs> let's get this Let's get this moving because my two African, uh, my two African co-stars are, are got masks on and they're ready. And it's cold out. It's negative five when, when hate crimes stakeouts usually happen. Really funny. Still, some things hold up. Like Chappelle's show, mm-hmm. so does Jesse Smollett's fake hate crime. Holds up. Very funny. And since we were in the neck of the woods, you know, it was nice to think about. Yeah. It was nice to think about that Jesse Smollett. Um, some people are great criminals, and some people just don't think through all the details. But thankfully, there are people who don't think all the details because they provided great fodder for comedy. And nobody made a better comedy joke about Jesse Smollett than Dave Chappelle by saying, find out where Kanye West was last night. (laughs) (laughs) Any Housers, let's talk about John Morant because you're very upset about this. I am very upset. Jared called me and he said, you know what? This, This is really... The Black Excellence Instagram pages are not happy right now. No, they're not. And I don't know if you fo- if you follow any Black Excellence pages, but they're out there. Yeah, they're out there. It's, they're out there, and they're they're filled with Oprah. They're filled with Tyler Perry, and they're filled with Jesse Smollett. They're out there, like Black Albinos. There's a few. There's a few. There's a few pages. And when you when you see them, you get surprised. You get surprised. Now, do you follow any Black Excellence pages? Yes. Well, World Star Hip Hop. <laughs> <laughs> If there was the opposite of a black excellence page, <laughs> it would be world star hip hop. By the way, why are they still calling that world star hip hop? It's got nothing to do with the world. It's got nothing to do with being a star and it has nothing to do with hip hop. Why don't they just call it inappropriately filmed street fights? <laughs> <laughs> why don't they call it society ruiner? Something like that, you know? <laughs> Why, do, why don't they call it a traumatic watch? Why don't they call it you shouldn't have scrolled to this? They call it reason why you got denied for a 401k. Yeah, they should have called it like, did you watch this to the end? Oh my God, we're close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> so John Morant did what? So uh, earlier, maybe about two months ago, it was reported that John Morant actually had some of his posse threatened an opposing team after a game. They were chirping, and basically the opposing team approached their bus in the tunnel, this, this, and that. And later that night, it was reported that uh, members of the opposing team, they uh, they had a laser pointer, a red, so- a red um, dot sight pointed at them from an SUV that John Morant was riding in. Great, great leadership that you want to see from your point guard, you know? Um, but recently today, it came out that it's reported that a police uh, had a report that John Morant actually threatened a 17-year-old kid punching him in the face about 15 to 17 times and also threatening him with a gun at a park in June. Are we sure these weren't birthday punches for turning 17? <laughs> <laughs> also, he was with his posse and you said this was a couple weeks ago. Are you sure if he was with his posse, it wasn't 25 years ago in 1995? 
Because I don't think anyone still refers to it as a posse. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he was with his clique. He was with his crew. Yeah, but you can't say gang. That's a trigger word during Black History Month. That's right. Yes. He was with his cohorts. Yeah, he's with, he was with his associates. His associates is the way to go. Yes. So uh, John Morant um, is one of the most famous people in the country, one of the most famous basketball players on the planet. And it seems like he's making two bad decisions in a row. Mm -hmm. At what point does Allen Iverson give him a phone call <laughs> and say, hey, Ja, let's talk? Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Ja, listen. I need the money right now. Let me be your spiritual advisor. Let me be your advisor to not go down my path. Yeah, let me be the bumpers in your bowling alley. Yeah, I would always, I would, I, that's a great career path when you be, when your career becomes teaching people not to be you. You know, that's like a whole field of guys who are like former addicts or whatever, and their whole job now is to be like, hey guys, don't be me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't do that. Like there's AI, there's a field for that. Or like, how about Antoine Walker? Could do that. Can call up John and be like, hey, listen, man, I had a posse too. But guess what else I had? 300 million. Guess who got the 300 million? My posse. So pick which one. You, you, you can't have a posse and 300 million. You yeah. got to choose. Yeah, you got to choose. You do got to choose. You got to choose. You know, maybe the posse, maybe you can fly in first class and the posse could take Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Spirit Airlines should be, the commercial should be for your posse, for your associates. <laughs> That's what it should be. Just make no mistake, if you had no hookup at Delta, I mean, you'd be, you'd be firmly comfortable in a Spirit Airlines oh, seat. Yeah, I'd be sitting next to a chicken. Yeah. Yeah, do you think they bring uh, chickens on there, like farm animals? Yeah, chickens, yeah. farm animals, yeah, all that shit. Has anyone got shot on a Spirit flight yet? Is there is there T T is there TCS? What are they called? TCA TSA. Uh, air marshal, you mean? <laughs> does the spirit have an air marshal? And does he shoot like that when he gets off? <laughs> 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 if something goes down to the plane, does the air marshal just go like that? <laughs> <laughs> so John Morant's making bad decisions. How do we how do we help John Morant to be? Hey, like hey dog, you can't. You know, here's the thing. Sometimes guys are so real, they're so down to earth that they don't know that they're like now multimillionaires mm -hmm. and in a different, they take, they, they, they breathe a different air. You can't be breathing the same air as a 17 year old at the park who pisses you off, who then you beat down. Because now you've assaulted a minor, you've committed a crime and you're John Moran. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong, the Memphis Grizzlies will find a way to make it go under the rug, <laughs> which is uh, what makes this country so great is that the law only applies to you if you're middle class or if you're poor. Mm -hmm. But if you're rich, there will be a way to get out of uh, this for John Moran. True. Okay. But he is black, though. Remember that. You know, he still is black. And you saw what happened to Shakari Richardson. Here's the deal. John Moran makes so much money for the Memphis est uh, establishment and Grizzlies. They'll figure something out for John Moran. Not only does he make it for Memphis, he's like... One of the most exciting players that the that the white kids love to yeah. look at. Yeah, you know he's got that charisma. He's got that major charisma that you just can't get rid of. Is it fun doing a podcast in an old pre-war New York City apartment that gets to be a hundred degrees? No, not is it really. fun to do a podcast and question whether you have stage four COVID <laughs> because you're like, do am I is my is my temperature one hundred nine right now? <laughs> How hot are you right now? I'm, I'm very hot. Yeah, but and you got an Ice Cube shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> I look like I'm about to perform a drive-by, but it is nostalgic put to uh, do a podcast in a room that sounds like it has an old TV playing in the background. Yeah, it does. It sounds like TV static. <laughs> <laughs> or there's a rattlesnake here. Rattlesnake here or a black woman dissatisfied at a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or it sounds like Tiger Woods' car after his wife found out he was cheating. Yeah, did John Morant's mom not finish his name? Did she like die while she was filling out? <laughs> <laughs> is it supposed to be Jamal or Jared or no? John means it means go uh, godly. Oh, job, ja, but isn't there supposed to be an H on there? There Does is. Does he have an H on his I name? No, or is I it just J A? Uh, it's just J A. But you know, I just wish John Morant would you know represent himself that way, especially not you know for, for black people. I mean, dog, if a fifteen year old or seventeen year old pisses you off, just let them down. How most NBA players let 
kids down and just not sign their autographs. Yeah. So how does he, how does John Morant make you feel as a young black teenager mm-hmm. from ten? You were ten, young black teenager ten years ago. I guess in twenty twenty three you're a young you're a teenager at twenty three, twenty five. But here's the deal. Jared at 25 is wiser than a lot of 40-year-old guys I've spoken to. Mm -hmm. He really, and what I think I can attribute his wisdom to is his R&B humming. He hums. I do. He keep, to keep, some people do yoga, Jared hums. Yeah. You're a hummer. Some people have Pilates, I have Jill Scott. You like to hum, my friend. Yes. So, this is disappointing to you, Jared. Yes. Okay, what do we do? Who do we contact? I think we to change it. I think we just got to surround him with some just real run of the mill Indiana white boys. Get in a Larry Bird, get in a Keith Van Horn, get in somebody who, you know, when they talk about shooting, the only shooting that they know is the three point shooting. They don't know if it's coming from a Uzi or not. So you got to do a white perimeter around him. You got to do a white perimeter around him. And not, a, him. not yeah. a cop perimeter. Yes. That, you could also do a white perimeter and it's cops. Yes. You would need a white perimeter of white basketball players around John Morant, exactly. saying we need you need a little time away from your friends from the, na- the old neighborhood. Yes, I need Stephen Adams to take him surfing. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Adams is on his team. Yes, Australian cat. So what are the consequences now for John Morant? Nothing. Nothing. I, nothing. I think you know if he keeps on threatening to shoot people, I think God will give him a consequence and blow out his knee next time he goes up for a layup. That's what you call karma. Karma. Instant yeah. karma. That's going to happen anyway, unfortunately, and I don't mean to wish bad, but any basketball player... Hold up, I just caught a glimpse of myself in a fucking reflection. I look pretty good today. Any... I hate when people say when I'm not wearing glasses, I look like a guy who wears glasses. That's just because they're used to seeing me with glasses. I also didn't like the fact that Bobby Lee referred to my nose as a bulbing nose. I didn't like that. Also, I think we have some editorial retractions from that episode with Bobby Lee. I'd like to start with my apologies to the Tacoma area. <laughs> yeah, there were so many people that commented that didn't. I'm sorry that you, you took it so seriously that I shit on Tacoma. But I mean, just go outside. Take a peek around. I mean, it's not Paris, right? It's Tacoma. Yeah. It's getting there. But I mean, the weather is really chew a gun. I mean, you, you turn on the weather and they go, today the chance of chewing a gun is going to be around 14%. <laughs> and in Seattle, there's a 17% chance of tear gas because there's protests. <laughs> so the West Coast is exactly what I figured it would be. But the crowds were great. And if you came to my show, I love you. And I love Tacoma. I love performing there for a day. And I'm not going to lie to you. I want to get the fuck out of Dodge. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I was, there was a goddamn piece of plastic in my sushi. Mm-hmm. But the waterfront was great. And boy, was that uh, Enterprise rental car very charming. I mean, what do you want me to tell you, Jesse Scuturo? Wow, Jesse Scuturo's got a ditch shirt on today. That shirt, I can tell you from experience, is at least 25 years old. Blast from a past. 20 though. years old. How long? You, how old do you think that ditch shirt is? Can't be. No, no, no. You still have a ditch shirt in your T-shirt rotation? Yeah. Because yeah. you're a simple man. Yeah. And that's what I love about you. <laughs> Yes, I do. I got to clean it up. My my t-shirt draw is a mess. You haven't even gotten like a bunch of new free t-shirts that would supplant that t-shirt? Dude, I got so many t-shirts. It's ridiculous. I actually like this t-shirt though. That's a nice t-shirt. Yeah. It's got a nice fade on it. Yeah, yeah. I like this one. Yeah, and it's good memories. Uh, yeah, and the armpits aren't blown out. Yeah, it's good memories when we everything was, everything was in front of us. Now everything is a little in front and a little behind. <laughs> when yeah. you're in the middle, you're going like... There's a lot there, but there's also a lot there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your career is nearsighted. It's nearsighted now, is what it is. Jared Harvin, the god, the assassin. So um, I'd like to just make a, a very special um, health announcement. Go ahead. Um, did I mention on the last episode that I went and got Checked. I think it was on the Patreon where I said I went and got checked for that little thing, and it's like a, a getting a high when you realize it's not cancer on your PP. Yes, that was on the last episode. <clears throat> this is important for men to hear. Colon cancer is on the rise, and I just want to do a favor out there. When you turn forty, just say you're having stomach cramps and go get a colonoscopy. That just say, oh, I'm having stomach cramps. I have some problems. Just so your insurance will pay for a colonoscopy. The age used to be fifty. Um, now they've changed it to 45, but you know, sometimes people, uh, as early as 40 get them 
And there's no symptoms until it's too late. So if you have polyps, they go in there, they remove them, it's no big deal, and then you're fresh, you're ready to go. So get it's an easy procedure. Get a colonoscopy. If you haven't yet and you're in your 40s, if you're in your 50s or 60s, what are you doing? Yeah. But if you're in your 40s, get a colonoscopy. Uh, for, I would 40 is I would do it at 40. I did my first one at 40. I had two polyps. Yeah. Now two polyps don't polyps don't necessarily turn into cancer. And some of them, but they remove them anyway. And then there's certain other polyps that could turn into cancer that don't necessarily turn into cancer, but they could. They remove those too. It's all about catching them, you know? So they get them, they get them out, and then you don't get fucking ass cancer. Mm -hmm. For a while at least. Yeah. Which is good. Ain't this place grand? It's still a fun place if you have a sense of humor. The key to humor, the secret sauce, is sorrow. And boy... Sorrow with a little bit of trauma in there. So with a little bit of trauma. A little bit, a little yeah. bit of trauma, yeah. Just a dollop of trauma. Jesse, you got a great sense of humor. You got a great laugh. What's the key? I like funny people. Be funny, I'll laugh. Yeah. yeah, and how do you avoid the sadness of the world? You just don't think about it. Yeah. You I sculpt. Stick, you throw yourself into something. I stick my head firmly sculpt. in the sand. Yeah, Eddie, he avoids socks at all costs. Ain't nothing wrong with sticking your hand firmly in the sand, bending over, and letting a cock ram you right in a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I just wanted to say that mm -hmm. with that accent. Yeah. Because it was an impulse at that moment. I think you need to take a visit to Manhattan Beach. I do. So get your colon checked out. Yeah. Your dad's had his his two hole reamed, right? Yes. Yes, he has. And he's all good. Mm -hmm. He's all good. But yeah. you know, it's 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 rising amongst black men too. So you know, what, leave that homophobia shit at the door, dog. You know, a finger's gonna go on your ass anyway. He's gonna be a doctor. Or it's gonna be the government. So just yeah. fucking get that shit checked out. <laughs> well, here's the thing: if you're upset about it, it's not even a finger. They throw you to sleep with propofol. I yeah. think it is, mm -hmm. which is the nicest nap you'll ever take. And then you just wake up three seconds later. It's been 15 minutes and you're done. And then you're like a little woozy for a second. It wears off. And then you go get the biggest burger you ever had in your life. You have to drink some garbage the night before to yeah. shit your... That's the worst part. But it's yeah. one day you do it and it's done. And then you have, you know, you don't have to take like drugs. You can just go get diagnoses and cleared. There's, that feels better. I would love to go to a doctor every day and be like, is this cancer? Is that cancer? Just to hear no. And then you go, ah. Mm -hmm. You just want to click your heels and walk away like the fairy that you are. <laughs> so go get your colon checked. That's just a little something there, you know. The scope goes into two. And eat your greens, too. And leave behind all the fucking bad shit. There's so, many, so much bad shit that people put into their body. Stop like, drinking soda. Go stop get your soda. Go get yourself your Brooklyn Cannery, brooklyncannery.com. Brooklyn get rid of the e-cigs, all right? Get rid of the vaping, the smoking. There's no reason why you should go around smelling like a carnival, okay? Get rid of that shit. It's not good for your body. Grown-ass man, 26-year-old, smelling like bubble gum. Yeah, that's not you? cool. No, yeah. <laughs> And also, I got rid of the snooze. You can do it. I don't know what to do with myself, but I got rid of the snooze. I you quit. Did, huh? Yeah, I got rid of it. How and that's long? Why I, How long now? It's been weeks. Oh. I mean, yeah, you do you do wrinkle your nose now like you're a member of Whoville more, but like it, it's worked. Yeah, it's like there's no thing to put my anxiety. Mm -hmm. you know, no place to put it. Like, Has it been tough? It's a little tough. Yeah. 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 Well, that's nicotine withdrawal, right? Yeah, but that only a couple days it lasts. But also, you didn't return the coffee, so that's good too. I didn't return know? the coffee either. You're I'm knocking out the addictions. Yeah, so yeah. there's no addictions in me right now, and uh, the nicotine's gone. It's just the memory of the habit. That's the hard part. But the nicotine takes two, three days, and it, it, you feel it. Mm -hmm. You definitely feel that. But I, I fucking suck that up. I'm strong. Um, so nearly half of U.S. murders have gone unsolved. A new statistic. Mm -hmm. And by new statistic, I mean maybe just someone who wanted someone to click on an article. You know, can you really, did someone really? Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you both this question, and you at home. Whenever you see one of these headlines, what are the chances they did a very thorough study of everything countrywide? What are the chances that someone cared enough to get the absolute facts as opposed to, you know, Cutting a few corners and editorializing a little bit to make the headline feel a little better. They definitely are, cut a few corners. What are the chances? No chances. Let's take a delve into this a little bit just to see if I'm right. What do they say? I don't want to spend too long on this because we're in a flow and people's attention spans are really just, they're not there. In 2021, only 51% one, of the homicides were, according to FBI statistics, analyzed by the Murder Accountability Project. Okay, so depending on how much you trust them, 
The country is seeing a continued decline in cleared cases compared to previous days with, uh, cases where the rates were close to 70. A case is defined as cleared when an arrest is made or there is an exception. So essentially what they're saying is that nearly half of U.S. murder cases go unsolved. Great for podcast content. Yes. We don't want, you don't want more solved cases, okay? There's f podcasts out there making millions of dollars speculating on who it could be. So that's great. You know, that's capitalism. Yeah. Avoiding the market opens up. When being a cop becomes the job that people want to do the least, then there's going to be a lot of murders and a lot of unsolved ones because nobody cares. And then what? The market corrects itself. Podcast content through the roof. True crime. Yeah. So one man's loss, another man's gain. Yeah, you so have if murder conviction backed by Manscaped. That's true. That's what those podcasts do. That's really funny going like, and then he cut her head off. Now, a uh, word from Bespoke Post. <laughs> My point is like, if you're a cop and you're like sick of being like vilified or having a hard time out there or something like that, start a pod. Start a true crime pod saying, I, am, I got this insight from the other side. Pays better. Right now in America, I think the job that people want to do the least is cop and public school teacher. Either that or be your ophthalmologist. Those three. And that's not a good sign. Because <laughs> if nobody wants to help me with my eyes, it's not good. That was mean. <laughs> <laughs> Have my eyes separated a little bit as I've lost weight? Or I think it, so. Yeah. yeah. it's Because I think when apart. my face gets bigger, it pushes them in a little bit. Yeah, so it's your sort eyes of like are just becoming like Pangea. Yeah. <laughs> And it's almost like when you lose weight, you the meat from the fat goes right back into your dick and you gain an inch or two. Have you always been able to see your dick? No. No? No. What so, age did you lose that at? It's not an, it's an, it's not an age thing. It's a weight thing. <laughs> <laughs> when I go over about 215, 217, I got to glance over. Yeah. <laughs> I got I to gotta look over. How it's, much have you lost? I'm, I'm down 15, 16 pounds. Wow, I'm good. stuck at about 203, 204, but from 219. So I got another, I got to get to two. And then ideally 195, 195 to two, I can, I can, um, you know, I can exist around those numbers. Yeah, that's good fighting weight right there. Yeah. Where are you at? Like 215. That's fine for 6'2". What are you, 6'2"? 6'2", 6'3". Yeah, 6'2", 6'3", 215. How, what are you? Um, 170. What? 170. Five foot four. That's about right. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of people don't know about the um, privileged status that Disney has in Orlando. Now, this was a big. Um, this is a big to do, okay? Because DeSantis, like I said, is putting an end to everything. And so, um, Governor DeSantis has taken back control over Disney's. World, world special district. So basically, this is like when the Seattle cops took back the Chop Chaz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there is a, a part of Copenhagen that is was taken over by rebels, and they just let them keep it. It's called Christiana. So when you go in there, there's no cops, there's no anything. They just let them have it. It became like a tourist attraction. You can smoke weed. You can do anything. You know, you can murder a family member. You can kill a prostitute. Like as long as it's done in Christiana, you're fine. It's a small, like, couple block radius, but the reason why it happened was the same reason why kind of Chop Chaz happened. They just let it stay. Because wow. in Copenhagen, they were just like, all right, we're, you know, we're open-minded. Let, let them keep it. Real-life Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, and I've been to Christiana, and I smoked weed there. Um, so Governor DeSantis signed a bill on Monday to take control of municipal services and development for the special zone encompassing Walt Disney World. The move deals a major blow to the company's ability to operate with autonomy. That's pretty close, actually. DeSantis says the special district surrounding Disney World has enabled the park to unfairly skirt local rules and building codes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a loose DeSantis right there. Close yeah. enough, in the yeah. wheelhouse. But DeSantis critics say the bill looks like retaliation for a growing feud between Disney and the governor, which hit a tipping point last year. When DeSantis said Disney crossed the line 
by fucking kids on carousels. Did I read that wrong? <laughs> Cross the line by opposing an education bill that restricts classroom discussion around gender identity and sexual orientation. Can we stick to the ABCs? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for gender identity and different sexual orientation. But when a kid is like four years old, can we stick to the one, two, threes and four by Bs? Let the parents handle that. Jesus Christ. Who the hell's talking about gender identity at four? You know, or three or two. Uh, um, <laughs> Dwayne Way's son? I guess. He started early, right? Oh, well, it's a she now, so. She. Yeah. She started early. Um, just, it's like, make it like beer. Just put it maybe seven. I don't fucking know. Uh, who gives a shit? Or not. Make it one. <laughs> who cares? Are we a little tired of hearing this? Yeah, gender studies within children. Jeez, yeah. like, like, just turn as many people trans as they want until they run out of, until they run out of uh, hormone replacement. That'll be funny. If there's like a shortage of that, like there was toilet paper during COVID, and people are walking around with one tit, <laughs> like an unfinished tit. And they're going like, hey, man, hey, man, I'm halfway. <laughs> fucking this, is I can't just run on the fucking hormones are really horrible. Get me a fuck out of here. <laughs> okay? What's going on? I got half the tits here. I'm almost done. I'm half baked. <laughs> that would be funny. Let them all until there's, until there's a shortage. I think it'd be nice to transition. The heart of the bill is... Uh, the appointment of a five-person state board to oversee municipal services such as fire protection and road maintenance where Disney operates. So they use that to kind of get in there. They'll have the ability to raise revenue to fund services and pay off Disney's debts. His pledge to strip Disney of its special tax status sparked fears that local taxpayers would be left on the hook, which would in turn spark a significant spike in local tax rates. Okay, so that's the other side of it, right? So you're going like, why does Disney have this special tax status? Well, they create a lot of jobs, right? Um, there's a lot of upkeep that the Florida, whatever. So, Jesse, explain this because you're smarter than me. So how does, this, how does this spark fears in the local community? Well, they think they're going to be on the hook for the bills, like cleaning up and garbage and all that shit. Oh, all their garbage and shit, whereas Disney was just taking care of that themselves. Yeah. But DeSantis would just raise their taxes, you know. He'll, he'll just figure way. out another yeah, way. He'll find out a way. The dude is schmat. DeSantis stressed on Monday. We got a strong DeSantis to the right guy. We, he just slipped it in there. DeSantis is smart. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> He's not my guy. Nah, nah, nah. We, I, you don't, do you have a guy? I like Yang, man. I want Yang back. You're always a Yang guy. I like Yang. He's mm. going to pay you a thousand bucks. Yeah, I have no guy. He's going to pay you to vote for him. How could you not vote for him? I like Yang. Yeah, a thousand bucks a month? I'll vote for anybody. Yang was doing people. fine until he laughed at a joke at stand at the stand, and it was on video or something in New York. Whose joke? Nobody knows, but it was like a little off color, and they oh, got yeah. him. Yeah, they got him. <laughs> Dude, if you pay me to vote for you, I'll vote for you. Yeah. Four-day work week's been tested in a couple countries, and it seems to be working out. That may be coming soon. Mm. Um, or as comics like to call it, four days too many of work. <laughs> what? Four-day work week. Guy, we do the two-hour work week, my friend, yeah. and we complain about that. So it's kind of it. brutal. I mean, well, the travel is brutal. You know, Whitney Cummings said, "Where's my pills?" But besides that, she also <laughs> said, <laughs> she <laughs> she also said we get paid to travel, and um, you know, that's it. That's getting hacky. With Whitney's fine. She doesn't do pills. It's all a joke. It became a joke. Yeah, let me just say, Whitney is one of the most genuinely nurturing people. She's so, great. And the whole pill the thing. Home, you yes. know, offered me a coat. She was very nice. And then totally forgot your name and didn't return your text. Yeah, after I, that. you know, I wished her happy birthday. She did not say anything back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I texted her happy birthday. She said, sorry, sir, I don't have any money. Yeah, and who am I to say? I, I enjoy Kalani hearing again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you, you got to get through it somehow. So their status is taken. Um, in a press release, DeSantis office said the bill would also end some of their special privileges, such as exemptions from state regulatory reviews. Oh, so the state's getting in there on Disney to review. They're, They're searching for the children. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's a, this, is a, uh, this is a Comet Pizza rescue. 
But this time they may find some. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't going to find them at Comet Pizza, but they might find them at Disney. Yeah, they're going to be like, yo, there's alcohol in this butterbeer. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, pet, if, if there are pedophiles in the world and the jobs that they most likely like to get is not old folks' homes. You're not going to see a long line of pedophiles applying to be caseworkers at old folks' homes. What you will see is a line of pedophiles being applicants for Disney World. Yeah, and they can't get into the old folks' homes anyway because there's too many Haitians applying. It covets. It covets. So what else is going on? Um, in news, um, this is crazy to think that TikTok's about to be banned. Why would they stop this? And China has said that it shows how insecure we are. Right? And you're like, really, China? Is that why you your TikTok is more called engineering oc tiktok the u.s government ban on chinese owned videos sharing app tiktok reveal washington's own insecurities and are an abusive state power a chinese foreign ministry he's not wrong right we're insecure about it they're going what you can't handle a little you can't handle a little Espionage. democratization of fame mm -hmm. you can't handle a little mirror back at you about what your education system has produced. Let's be honest. Let's talk real. Let's talk real for a second. Is TikTok the menace or is that we like it the menace? I don't know. It's one of those things. It goes, who's to blame, meth or the people who do meth? Who's to blame? Yeah. You know the dangers. Who's to blame? It really is a reflection onto ourselves. It's a little bit of a mirror. It brings us closer. Yeah. It makes us like basically touch ourselves. It's like a Chinese finger trap. It is. It's a little bit like a mirror. It's a little bit like a mirror watching white people dance not as good to black people and doing the shh over the N-word when it comes up in the rap song. Yes. Which is the TikTok, uh, TikTok way. Yeah, you might as well just say it at that point. I mean, you're already disrespecting yeah. my culture being work, offbeat. Work, work. <laughs> is that thing still around? What is that? The dunk? Yeah, no, the uh Oh the dab? Yeah. Dab, you mean? Dab. Yeah. Yeah. Dab. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were doing. We ju well, we just had a Boomer Fest 2023. <laughs> yeah, you said that. I said that. And you were doing a yeah. NFL celebrate, touchdown celebration in 2002. Welcome to Boomer Fest 2023, <laughs> where we're going to give you some dapple, and we're going to take you down to listen to some fire tunes. <laughs> Come on down to Boomer Fest 2023. <laughs> if you guys want to hear a light show, it's really a light show in here. Boy, is it light. It gets light up in here, man. The kids call it lit. We call it a light show. All right. Come on. Boom. Da 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 Welcome to Boomer Fest. Okay. Come one. Come all. My simpletons. My simpies. Come my simpies. What are some other slangs that's hot right now? Bricked up. Come on down, brickled up down, get your bricks down, bring your tea hut, bring your hut of bricks down. What else we got <laughs> for Boomer Fest 2023? Fire is always a good one. Yeah. Wow. You're light on, you're light on slang, my friend. Fire, brick, I mean, dog. I mean, come on, I'm magic. <laughs> come on, my puppy dogs. Come on down, puppy dogs. All my puppies, come on down, uh. Come on down to Boomer Fest 2023. We're going to be hitting you with music that's really, really, really fire. Yeah. All the slang I can't say because it'll get you canceled. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I suspect the government takes the significant step of telling all federal employees that they can no longer use TikTok on their work phones. Many Canadians, from business to private individuals, will reflect on the security of their own data and perhaps make choices. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told reporters after the announcement. So Canadians are getting rid of it. North America is getting rid of it. We here in Canada have had enough of your Chinese meddling. Chinese aren't interested in the Canadians. 
No. No. They don't, they're not interested in corrupting the Canadians. Mm -mm. They're interested in corrupting the Americans. Um, so Twitter is officially blocked in China. So why? <laughs> Do you want to hear the most annoying laugh of all time? <laughs> that, that laugh is sponsored by Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> so isn't that funny that they said we're insecure, but they have blocked Twitter in China. I think uh, YouTube and Instagram also. Oh, yeah. You can't see a thing on there. Yeah. There's no way they're going to let you watch a Gary V how-to video. Yeah. No way. China's like strict parents. Yeah. Instagram is also blocked in China. And that's weird because Mark Zuckerberg's wife is Chinese. So maybe you thought she could work something out for the deal. Yeah, but maybe she married a whitey, so she lost her, you know, she yeah, lost you her credit. You figure she could go over there and maybe talk some sense into them, bring an Ali Wong special and they convene it over comedy and, and ramen. Yeah. And work it out. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube is blocked in China. Google. Tempting to load the YouTube app or website while in mainland China will return an error. YouTube videos embedded on the other sites will not load. Likewise, YouTube's paid content and YouTube TV are also blocked. You learn on this podcast. You learn that the trip that you're going to don't think about watching, you, you're going to have to bring DVDs. If you go to China, you bring DVDs. Mm -hmm. I don't think Netflix is allowed in China, right? No, unless you have a VPN. You're not allowed to do nothing in China. Besides that, you're watching Monsters in Law. Let me ask you a question. Are you better off not knowing? Are you better off? It's like, and I say that in a Long Island accent, because they, they are, are they better off out there never coming to the city or knowing any different? Knowing any better? They don't know. They're on the island. They don't think about anything mm -hmm. except, the, you know, the one house that you showed me with the Dominicans are uh, drug dealers in there. But the rest of the neighborhood looks very good. You just stay away from that one house. That's all you got to know. Yeah. And then you go to your deli. You got your bagel stuff. You got your pizzas. You got a black owned pizza there with, with Jared lifts. Black owned pizza. They got oxtail pizza. Yeah. The pie What's hole. it called? Shot them out. The pie hole. The pie hole. Is it On good? Farmingdale. Yeah. Right behind Ralph Italian Isis. Now, what are the chances when you go into the pie hole? That there's not a 99, 90s hip hop mix playing on Pandora. Oh, no, it's always Luther Vandross. Oh, Lu they go Luther, yeah. sexy and grown. Yeah. yeah, always Luther. Yeah, I want an oxtail slice I'll from a black owned one. business. There's th that and cuts and slices in Brooklyn. Yeah. There's another one. Another black owned business? Mm -hmm. A black owned pizza shop, you mean? Support this your is, black yeah, businesses. Pizza shop, yeah. Yeah. No matter what, they're making the table on a, they're making the pizza on a turntable. Yeah. So. Support your black businesses, including the podcast Flagrant 2. It's, a, it's kind of a black business. Very black, yes. It's very diverse. He has a diverse crowd of young, he has a, cool guys. He has a lot of dark-skinned people. He has Akash, he has Alex, he has his mustache. Yeah, and listen, I remember when I first went, I went on Brilliant Idiots, like the fill-in for, um, you know. Charlemagne? Charlemagne. And um, I got like talk about black people and forget the most famous black person. Yeah, and I went on there and I talked a lot about black people. You know me. Yeah. And the people loved it. I got like eight thousand yeah. followers because I was you know dropping science like the kid usually does. Bong 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 bong. Yeah. But um, <laughs> then I went Mr. Rogers. And then I went on um, Flagrant Two as well. And then like I remember I did a show in D.C. and like it was like dude like forty black dudes just came to the show. Mm -hmm. Like they just came out and they're like Flagrant Two. And it was like, so it's great. Schultz's podcast is great in that way. I think it's very diverse, and that's great. It's bringing people, bringing the youth together. Yeah. It's not segregated anymore. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. He's got the Indians. He's got the blacks. He's got the Karens. He's got the whites. He's got everybody in yeah. there. He's got the left. He's got the right. It's the gateway podcast for other podcasts. He's got all guys who wear high pants. Anyone who it, takes a walk on the beach can look at a podcaster and go, that's a guy after my own heart who's always ready to put his toes in the sand. Oh, yeah. Because his pants are always a little high. Yeah, yeah all of his podcasters look like shrimpers. <laughs> <laughs> I love Schultzy. Schultzy, when are you going to come on the pod? Make a clip and send it to him. Tag him in it. He'll say it. Schultzy, when are you coming on my podcast? And I would like to go back on Flagrant too, And... um give you COVID. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, it's been too long, Schultzy. I love you. 
Um, so they're banning TikTok. I'm off it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got sick of it, dude. I rose up quick to 200,000. Not everything's about the fame and the money. Once I found out what they were doing, I just logged off. And it, 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 our boy who does the clips, shout out. Um, thanks for coming out in Chicago. It was great to meet you. Um, my boy Andrew, love you, you to death. Uh, yes, sir. You're the best. You're a valuable part of the team. Very important. Um, <clears throat> a little chunkier yeah. than I expected. Huh? A little chunkier than I expected. He's a chunky monkey, but in good shape. For, Handsome for, kid. Yeah, yeah, you know. Big comedy fan. Looks like he's probably some great real estate. Listen, he is a loyal fucking member of the team, and I love him to death, and he lived in Chicago. He's so loyal, he bought a ticket. I would have got him in free. I mean, what are you doing? Anyway, he he posts all on TikTok now. I'm off. Mm. I'm just off, you know? That's where you're getting the best engagement, though, right? Your numbers are the best on TikTok? It started, and then they changed the algorithm, or somebody flagged me who had it out for me, or I said right, something, right. and then it's... TikTok is like, they protect the... They're, they're hypocritical. It, TikTok is the funniest, because they'll be like, whoa, you're just, you know, like the armless Nazi sketch. They're like, whoa. Yeah. But then they'll have some girl going like... Yeah, you'll see a yoga, and it'll just be like, uh, yeah, this is as close to my pussy as you can see. I follow one girl like that. It was the camera's just under her pussy, and it's just she does a yoga backflip, and she has a OnlyFans page that she's promoting. And Jared's a member. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Not only are the owner, I'm also a client. Yeah, you know. Are you an OnlyFans kid? No, 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 I'm not. But yeah, the, the the Pilates thing is getting a little outrageous. I mean, it looks like there's a Hubble telescope on our clitoris. <laughs> yeah, I am sorry to Tacoma. No, you're not. No, I'm not. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, what type? Of, we walked down the street four o'clock. All the restaurants were closed. What type of city is that, dog? I'm sorry, people were hurt by it. What are the chances you're going to think we're going to get Jesse to come with us for a weekend and hang out? No, nowhere. I mean, he won't even come to Atlantic City. Diego you could drive like, with us. You want to cut drive? You don't want to go to Atlantic City. We over in Miami. He didn't want to go. Dog. You didn't want to go to Miami. Didn't want to go to Atlantic City. Well, you offered to Miami. I was sitting there going like, "All right, no, you paying for no, it?" No, first, no, first of all, you offered to Miami, but you told him to stay in my room. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. now I now now I don't like being lonely, and I don't snore, so I I want Jared in my room. Ooh. Yeah. Single bed. <laughs> no bed. You just no bed. Just, I want I, just me and Jared in a. Uh, Sleep sack. <laughs> yeah, you just inspired a whole conspiracy theory Reddit of why I'm, I'm gay and how I made it in Hollywood now. <laughs> That's exactly how Jared made it. And if you think this is Hollywood, you're way off. Oh, no, it's not Hollywood. Dog, if you're doing sexual pleasures to get on a podcast, you are going to skyrocket yeah. this business. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would be funny if I was, imagine like I was like, you get a you get a young guy in your pocket, like you're into dudes, you get a young, you get a young in your podcast, and you're like, here's the deal, okay? You're going to have to blow me once in a while. And then the guy goes, to be on your podcast? And he goes, yeah, you're right. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of admits he was like, worth a try. <laughs> he was like, well, in that case, I just won't be on it because this doesn't matter. He goes, actually, you're right. I was worth a try. I just was trying to blow you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you got to save those for the big. You got to save those for the put on the dress parties yeah. where they offer you $15 million. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave Chappelle gets par You got to go for the Dave Chappelle paranoid parties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's probably not all wrong yeah. either. But you got to be able well, to sacrifice. You got to walk in there and be like, yo, I'll do a Big Mama 6. <laughs> he should make a movie he wants to make, though, and just fund it. That would be fun. That'll be nice, you know. Yeah. But he just likes going on the road. He should make a horror film. Yeah. He won't have to pay for uh, smoke machines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because he smokes so much. That's right. <laughs> I want to make sure people understood. He really does smoke a lot. He's taking the express train out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The bullet train, dog. Unfortunately. People, do, you know what's funny, though? A lot of it, some of it is luck and genetic, but not really. Mm. Let's be honest. When you look at statistically Americans and the way we die compared to like other places that don't have the processed foods and the cigarettes, and not really. You could, you could hear in his voice, too. It's getting yeah. real gravelly. Here's the deal. There are some people who get unlucky and they get cancer, but n not really. For the most part, if you clean your diet up, you get your colonoscopy, if you drink your water, mm -hmm. okay, if you say your racial slurs in the privacy of your own car to get it out, <laughs> yes. you have a good chance of living longer. That's doctor approved. Yeah. Right? Jesse loves racial slurs. 
That's not true. Would someone just make a clip? I want to do a podcast. It took you too long to respond. <laughs> yeah. That's not it true. took you too long to respond. <laughs> I want to do a podcast of all just clippable, cancelable moments. Go and someone puts it together with AI bots going because you've said some funny ones out of context. Remember we caught him saying a few? And he was like, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. That's where Jared puts on his cop voice. I didn't mean it like that at all, sir. I was not no, I didn't mean it he like that. He tried to get me on some. He tried to get me on with the Minnesota, uh, with the uh the Somali people. And you thought I said Your memory is fucking imagine having yeah. a twenty five year old memory. He didn't smoke weed. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. Who the hell remembers 15 episodes ago? Somebody who's trying to cancel you so you can get ahead and show us. Yeah, all you said is they had big foreheads. And all I said is I saw Ilan Omar about 100 times in the Mall of America. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there she is, there she is, there she is. It yeah. was, there was a lot of body doubles. Yeah, it was like a... I'm just saying, if you if she wanted to walk safely, she wouldn't need to hire security if she walked to the Mall of America because you're like, she's everywhere. Yeah, it was like a Somali Truman show. <laughs> And shout out to our boy who's Somali who we hung out with that night. Yeah, Beza and uh, I forgot the other brother. And you name. remembered their names. Another twenty-five year old move. I remember them as flagrant, flagrant two <laughs> fan one and two. <laughs> they were extras in the movie you call yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. So, um, TikTok will go by, but I think it. I think it's on its way out. Yeah. Right? Like, totally. It's on this way out. It's going to be a lot of influencers looking for a paycheck. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of murder work out there to do because you won't get caught. Mm -hmm. Start a podcast. Nobody will, has done this yet where they murder and then podcast about their murders as if they didn't do the murder for their own content. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you got to eat what you kill. You know, so you got to go out there and kill to eat to make your ad revenue. I got a murder for Manscaped. We shouldn't be putting these ad names in these horrible sentences. We really they're should. not approved. Yeah, you may want to bleep that Manscaped. Do you mind bleeping it? Remember bleep. You can't. We can't do that. Yeah, we can't do that. But probably not going to get ads anyway. <laughs> they're not. Well, actually, you don't have to do it because they're not listening to this episode unless they're. Are they a partner on this one? No. Okay. We have no ads. It's so a murder for Manscaped. It's a good slogan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want a bunch of shit you don't need? A hook up a spoke post. Cut your fumes and yeah. some necks. <laughs> Abdi. Abdi was the brother's name. Just remember. Guys, that. you got to support patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Yeah. God, this show's getting good, though, isn't it? It's getting real we've good. We've really found the rhythm because we've been patient. We figured it out. And I just know this is a great episode. And I'm just happy that I can still be funny while also being in a sauna. It is hot in here. It is hot in here. Um, so I want to get into these two last stories, you know, to make the news funner is our goal. And sometimes we don't have to do that because the news is already funner. So the Mexican president tweeted a photo of what he swears is a real elf. Now, last I checked, Mexico is a real country, right? True. And the president is a real president, and that's a real position, right? True. Well, apparently he saw Will Farrell in costume outside his house and <laughs> tweeted it. Anything's possible. Mexican president Oops. goes viral for claim he has photo proof of mythical. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on here? What you don't understand, what you don't understand, Jared, and let me explain this to the people who are a little who don't understand, and I'm about to school you up on something. Me and Jesse could school you up, and he can, he can back me up 100%. Go ahead. There was a time in this country where this article, mm -hmm. this article could only be in one media outlet. And you know what that was called? The Inquirer. It was called the National Inquirer, and that's what it is. And occasionally the National Inquirer would get the right story. Like, most of it was just UFO baby eats black guy's dick. Mm -hmm. Because he thought it was barbecue and goes back. <laughs> it was like the weirdest, uh, you know, UFOs land, rape yeah. a woman, impregnate her. Now there's now all of Minnesota is hybrid aliens. Mm -hmm. It was it was stories like that, yeah. right? Wolf boy found. Yeah, wolf boy found. You know, Andrew Schultz, uh, DNA done, twelve percent. Yeah, you was, know, Native was, American. It was all Amber Heard claims. Yes, <laughs> it was all. It was certainly like that. So a story like this, where they go. Uh, we found a mythical elf uh, would be in the National Enquirer. Now, 
now we're looking at a real media outlet. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, except this is the story, and you can't add comedy to comedy. The Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez, that's too many fucking names, guy. <laughs> Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Abrador, what the fuck, dog? How many maiden names do you have? You're not a chick with a vagina who got married four times. Mm -hmm. Pick one, you greedy fuck. Yeah, with a name like that, you got a prenup. I mean, come on. And you got to say Mexican president before that? To say his name, I just said six words. <laughs> That's like me going, what's up, uh, Mr. Graybeard, uh, my boy that I grew up with. Give it up, everybody, for Jesse, Fernando, Sensito, Scatara. You got to simplify that to has a great mole recipe. <laughs> That's it. On his business card, he goes, everything is, everything is mystical. Uh, he said, everything is mystical on Twitter accompanied by two photos, including one that the president says shows an ollux. So what is an ollux? Is that a Mexican girl who wants a green card? <laughs> what is an ollux? Can someone call, call Fluffy and ask him? What's an ollux? How fast? How, come on, Google it. Not it's Jesse, because it'll take forever. It says it right here. <laughs> Oluxes, oh, are small, mischievous creatures that inhabit forests and fields and are prone to playing tricks on people, like hiding things. Some people leave small offerings to appease them. Uh, the spirit in the mythological tradition of certain Maya peoples from the Yucatan Peninsula and Guatemala, also called the Chinica. It's like a Mexican leprechaun. So why didn't these Mexican leprechauns fucking, why do they make themselves more known? Why don't they come out during the day? First of all, the Mexican leprechauns, dog, how much shorter is the lepsicons than a lot of the Mexicans? Same thing. I mean, dog, if we're talking a Mexican leprechaun, a great vast majority of Mexicans you see are already hovering around the five foot three and under range. Yeah. So if you get a leprechaun, you're talking about an Ant-Man level leprechaun. Mm -hmm. The pictures that the president saw is probably a picture of his cousin. <laughs> I mean, it's very easy to fool someone into being a chupacabra, a lux, you know? Can we see the pics? Wait, wait, let's see. He racked up nearly 5 million views on the post. Even the fucking Mexican president is, is, is trolling for content views. Oh, that looks exactly like a chupacabra. Dogs, it's Carrie Feehan at night with yeah. no flash. Yeah. Dogs, that looks like Jesse Scutoro. <laughs> wow, look at the eyes. So, what do we think? Is this an Alux? This dude clearly doesn't have an iPhone with night vision. <laughs> this is an old flip phone photo. Oh, yeah, bro. It's a scary looking thing, though. So, what do they do, the Aluxes? <laughs> what do they scare? What are they? It doesn't appear the president was joking. I think they were the ones <laughs> no, that No, we told, got that point. I think they were the ones that told Carlos Mencia to steal all the jokes. <laughs> I think they were the ones. And he's not even Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> um, the photo of the alleged Alex was taken last week by an engineer at the construction site of a new train railway in Yucatan. Why don't they go hunting during the day with, with cameras and guns <laughs> and take one captive? The post has set off a mockery and astonishment amongst some, including speculation the creature in the tree is actually just an animal. Um, let's take a peek at that again, and I'll tell you what animal that is. It's half Mexican, too. Yeah. It could be an animal. I mean, I don't... I bet, what type of animal you think that is? Because that looked like a An sloth. animal that likes heavy metal? I mean, yeah, that looks like a sloth with a nice weave. Could be a sloth with a nice weave. That's the best That's the best tracks I've ever seen on the sloth in my life. Comment below. Do you believe in Aluxus? I do. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone's culture. I believe in Aluxus. I've seen them. I've seen a lot of them at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of them. Yeah, but we all have. We all have things that we believe in. Yeah. That, you know, other people don't, you know. Because I think this is just a Mexican kid in a fucking heavy metal wig yeah. at night. Yeah. I think they set this shot up. 
Or, you know, sometimes these guys, Mexicans work so hard, sometimes they get hammered. When you get hammered, you like to climb a tree once in a while. One of these guys might have fucking climbed a tree. Or it could be the spirit of Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. I had an ex-girlfriend whose father was like an Irish guy, and he goes, when he drank whiskey, he would get naked and climb a tree. So maybe that's what a Luxes are in all these years. It's just drunk Mexicans climbing trees after a long, hard day of fucking real work. Because they like to get boozed up. Is this insensitive humor? I agree with you, it is. <laughs> but it is human nonetheless. It is said in jest. Nothing literally to be interpreted. If you put it in a British accent, it sounds like you're more official than you are. Mm. It is all said in jest. So there you have it. Okay, and we will end on this. Jared Harvin is getting engaged. Congratulations. <laughs> To Jared Harvin and his new girl friend from Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> by way of Chicago. I'm making that up. Um, Jared's a solo guy. Jared's like um, he go. He's like Jon Snow. He goes it alone. You know, you're you're like a. I go it alone only when it means I don't have to sleep in the same bed as you. That's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing. No, you could have, you know, you what you did, you could have slept in that other bed instead of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But that bed was comfortable. I get it. But I don't snore anymore. I, I believe you, dog. Yeah. I Wait, believe back you. and forth for what? So, so the My room had two combo. beds because, you know, it was like, I was like, ah, oh, the gym's here. And he was staying in the condo, which was cl actually the condo ended up being nicer than the hotel room. But, you know, other comics were in there. You know, there's bed bugs in there, you know. you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I was so excited to stay there. It was nice. I laid my head down. I look at the guest book, see Sam Talon, Adrian Impellucci, and then it goes Dan Lamore and uh, Natalie Cuomo. Hey, we fucked here. Yeah. <laughs> if, you know, if you know those two, you know that's, that's not a good sign. Well, Sam Talon uh, was in that bed. I know the Springs had some give. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say the other, but I, I only call guys fat. I don't go women. It's not right. I'm yeah. not, you can only be gay to do that. Mm -hmm. Gay guys have that right to call a girl fat. A yeah. straight guy can't, but I can't call a guy a fucking fatty. Speaking of which, we need to get Mateo Land on this podcast. Yes. Um, so, um, Black History Month's over. Yes, it is. Today, we're filming this right now. It is the end of Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And, um... We're filming this to celebrate the end of Black History. Imagine. <laughs> I said, this is the celebration of the end of Black History Month. No. So, uh, Black History Month happened. I paid homage to Jared um, many times by um, letting him walk in front of me on the plane. And those, those days are over now. Black History Month's over. That was very funny when you said that. When you, it was early in the morning and you're, I think he had a better seat than me. Um, he gets hooked up. And I was like, you do it in front of me? He says, Black History Month, dog. And it was very funny. <laughs> so, um, shall we call uh, demure, usually demure and reclusive Draymond Green um, says, get rid of Black History Month. Teach my history from January 1st to December 31st. I don't even have to listen to what he hears. It's what he says. As a history major myself, um, I have to say, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, so let's hear what he has to say, though. Let's see what new media has to say. <laughs> After we watch and fucking goddamn video. What do you got there? I thought you were eating something. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. Just press play. The ad will play. We gotta sit through this ad. Carlos Mencia is half Mexican. I knew it. Is he half Mexican? Yeah. I wasn't gonna I, I let Bobby Lee walk over me the last last episode because he said he was literally gonna run over a dog and then I made a joke about him not liking animals and he was like, What are you talking about, bro? I love animals. So I wish they heard that. This is actually the first time you've seen me in a black history month uh shirt. All Black History Month, and it's very intentional. And I really just threw this shirt on because I didn't have another shirt to throw on. But Black History Month, at some point, can we get rid of it? Like, at some point? 
Why, why, why we got to keep getting the shortest month to celebrate our history? You got governors want to take our history out of schools. And I'm not going to be the fool to go say, yeah, we get celebrated for 28 days. So at some point, I'd like to get rid of it. It's, you know, we, we're making all these changes in the world. Can't talk about these people. Can't talk about those people. Can't say this. Can't say that. At some point, it's time to get rid of Black History Month. Now, get rid of Black History like they're trying to do. But Black History Month? No. Teach, teach, teach my history from January 1st to December 31st. And then do it again. And then again. And then again. And then again. That's what I like to see. I like it. I like what he said. I got, I got no comment on that except, you know, I kind of got a little chills from that. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I like what he said. I never understood why it was in February. Anyway, you know. And also, I've been taught that, you know, black people built this country, so why just subjugate it to a month? Because the sky looks like the people in that month? I think it's one of those things, right? What'd you say again? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because the sky looks like the people in that month? Because <laughs> it's got clouds? It's dark. It's dark. Oh, right. It's dark and cloudy, and, and gets it gets dark early. Yes. Yeah. I think... The hist- I, th- I would guess that, um, so here's the r- actual reason, a little history fact of the day. It's celebrated in February because Woodson chose a week in February because of Abraham Lincoln, whose birthday was February 12th, and Frederick Douglass, who was both enslaved and did not know his actual birth date, but chose to celebrate it on February 14th. So two great Americans had a lot to do with the end of slavery, so they chose those days. Um, I think it's one of those overcompensation bullshit things. Mm-hmm. It's one of those like ceremonial bullshit things. Mm-hmm. It's like saying the right thing or, you know, a joke or this word. It's like, okay, you stopped it. I guess racism's over now. It's one of those things. Diversity hire for a it's month. One, it's one of those things. It's one of those meaningless ceremonial bullshit things to give you instead of like real actual change, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, here's your month. Are you okay? Yeah, Black History Month is, uh, Black History is American history. It's They're interwoven. And so, yeah, there shouldn't be any like, hey, this is Black History Month. That should be, it should be, you know, all the time. Mm-hmm. You learn about Sojourner Truth and you learn about Frederick Douglass and you learn about the abolitionist movement you learn about slavery, you learn about Middle Passage you learn about the history of America, the tobacco fields the cotton fields, the cotton jenny yeah. the different state laws the slave fugitive acts Plessy versus Ferguson so. you get it all in the whole year I don't think there's 28 days where McDonald's gets to fucking do a special <laughs> For Black History Month, they give you a quarter off a Happy Meal. Yeah, I mean, John Brown's tirade didn't even last that long. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I agree. I got nothing to add, and I think it was beautifully said. Now, if there was a White White History Month or day, what do you think it would be on? Uh, White History Day? Mm Mm-hmm. I'd have to say, uh, July Saka, Sunny, uh, let's go to Hamptons. (laughs) (laughs) There was a Greek History Day. Um. We would never know what it was because the Greeks would argue on which day it was until the end of time. I would just assume it was National Diner Day. Yeah. <laughs> if there was a Jewish, if there was a Jewish history day or month, Eddie's what would Target it be? Has a sale. <laughs> what would it be? I think it would be somewhere in the middle of uh, the winter, so they could go down to South Florida. And enjoy the weather down there. Because they really figured it out, those snowbirds. They figured it out how to do it. You go to the West Coast, there's no water. It's also too far of a flight. The Chinese (laughs) food in New York is too good to leave it year-round. But when it gets cold outside, we go down to Florida. Mazel tov. What's up, everybody? Small business shout-outs. I want to give a shout-out to brooklyncannery.com. Healthy sodas. Prebiotic. 
low calorie, all natural sweeteners. Giannis Pappas, all one word for 15% off your next order. BrooklynCannery.com. Get their coffee spritz too. It's really good. That is really good. It is really good, their coffee spritz. Very nice. What else we got? Jesse Scaturo. We have Nate Linder. Nate's killing it. He's killing it. He's told me he's made his, his the investment's been great. He keeps getting business. NateLinder.com. He's a social media managing guru. He helps businesses across the world create high-performing websites. If you need uh, brand awareness, better leads, you need help with your website, online sales, go to NateLinder.com right now. He's killing it. Chris Minetti, South Jersey, right? Philadelphia, 215-750-3730. Hit up Chris if you need to cash a check and you don't want nobody in your business. Then, of course, we got For the Free dot art, all things music in Hawaii. They list show dates. They tell you about bands. Check it out, For the Free dot art. It's a good peruse. Then we got Manly Girly Studios. They started in North Carolina. Wait a second. I thought they were in Miami. This they is were new Miami. copy. Oh, they moved. They're on the run. <laughs> These guys are on the run. Uh, I love them. They're very supportive. So go check their stuff out. Their podcast network is a network of North Carolina comics and their friends. What are they doing? I don't know. They're moving? Are they on the run? <laughs> Comedy <laughs> troupe. Uh, check out Casa de Thinking. Yeah, um, they're on the run like other comics that we know. That's right. Where they're tackling some of life's <laughs> biggest questions. What is love? What is consciousness? Will robots end humanity? Let's dig deep and explore the unknown, they say. <laughs> Oh, they got a new show called Jew and uh -oh. and they made me read it, <laughs> where they dive into conspiracy theories and unexplained phenomena. Okay, so it's tongue-in-cheek. Um, and for your Gen Xers out there, a side of fries. They love that show, side of fries. These are good names. It's a perfect variety podcast. Get to know us better at the Manly Girly Show and Gringo in the Rough. Oh, look at this. For Giannis listeners, get 20% off merch. That's a good deal. With promo code. Dog, go get yourself, have some fun. You know, go wear a manly girly show <laughs> fucking shirt mm -hmm. for fun. And people go, who's that? And be like, yo, dog, it's just funny. It's some podcast I don't listen to that promotes on my other podcast. And I thought it would be funny if I just got that shit. <laughs> so go get it. What else we got? ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. You're moving your car. If you bought your car out of state, go to ExclusiveAutoShipping.com to get your free quote from our boy, Jared. Um, guess what? Military and student discounts are available. Exclusive, exclusiveautoshipping.com. And how's about this? We got two new sponsors, I believe. Yeah, no copy yet. Ryan Shortman? Ryan Shortman, but he gave us a website. So check it out at, what is it? Dis Displaypros.net. Displaypros.net. All one word. Displaypros.net. So welcome aboard. We'll find out what he wants. And then we have, who is this? Is this another one? Yeah, yeah, it's another one. No Sa copy yet. Uh, Sam Gubera, she reached out to me. Thank you. We love you, too. Thank you for reaching out. And what did she say? I like she went old school. She, uh, she gave a nice name there. Sam, I haven't been cracked open and cleaned out in so long. My hymen is regenerating itself. Gubera. Yeah, there you Real go. Real good. <laughs> old school. Yeah. Cocoed. Well, you Sam, you'll it. get fucking cracked open. <laughs> um, so what is her deal? Uh... Go ahead, Jersey. No, she just has to add her copy. We'll read it next Do week. Do we know what you she reached out to you? Yeah, hold on. What did she say? Let me see. Jesus Christ. She said, uh, something to do with um I got sponsors who don't give the copy. This is so niche. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, most of my clients clients are women. I have a few male uh clients. She's an OnlyFans girl. The ad <laughs> the ad is mainly for men within the hour of the Nashville area who have women in their lives that are into horses. Some random, I know. But that's even for it. Just helps my SEO and the Google presence by posting my site more on platforms. I'm with it. So, so what's your site? Uh, she didn't give one, but okay, something to do with equestrians. So, you know, if you like horses, hit Sam up. And yeah, in the Nashville area. If we got any freaking wasps? Yeah, if you live near <laughs> Nate Bargatze, hit her up. Yeah, if you live by me, um, Sammy, Sam girl. All right, you haven't been cracked open in a long time. Well, listen. Asking the universe will provide. Jared yeah. Harvin is a single man. No, no. <laughs> oh, I'm no. just a gigolo, and everywhere I go, people admire my singing. Oh, God. Join the club, Sam. Yeah. Let me see. Let's take a piece. We got a piece on our hands? <laughs> we, on. Do we have a piece on it? Jesse, look at Jesse. Let me see. <laughs> All right, is that it? That's it, yeah. All right, we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. 
It's been a 